comment. Uh, we will start today's uh, fight. Okay. And first, let's uh, the, the, all three teams, please, uh, the team leader, please introduce your team members. Okay. Let's start with the reporter. Uh, we are from WeGo, and this is Ke Jun Yi, this is Jie Chen Yu, this is Hong Zheng Huang, this is Li Jie. I am Ke Yu Te. Thank you. Okay, how about the opponent? Welcome to Nancy High School, and he is Yoshen Zheng, he is Chen Yang, he is Qi Hong Wei, and he is Bo Han Wang, and I'm the captain, Hao Zhe Li. Okay, how about the referee? Hello everyone, we are Team Excel from CFS, and I'm the spokesperson of Team Motion, he did the second half, so far you take, and our team mates, Xiao Yu Ru, Hong Shan Li, and Yang Xin Ru, we look forward to have great discussion with you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Then we will introduce the, the today's jury. Uh, my name is Will Gang from National Dongwan University. Hi, I'm Dalima from Nanjing University. Hi, my name is Ban Qishu from Beijing University. I'm Dalima from Jiaodong University. Okay, and I will be the chief, uh, the chair the today. I'm from uh, National Taitung University. My name is Lin Zifeng. Okay. Okay. First, let's start the procedure. Today, uh, the first one, uh, the opponent will challenge the reporter for the problem. The available problem will be on the blackboard there. Accept. Okay, the reporter will accept the problem number 14. And okay, for the uh, presenters, please <coughs> write down your name on the blackboard.
Okay, the preparation time is up. Uh, the reporter, you can start your pre 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 presentation now. So, on greeting, honorable judges and fellow debaters. I am from we from TH Hufei, and uh, my topic is looping pendulum. So, for first, I will say the objective of the experiment. And then the theory, and then the apparatus, procedure, and result, and finally the conclusion. For the objective, for the problem statement, is to connect two loads with one heavy and one light, with the heavy vertical to the ground and the lighter swing from an angle. And we'll loop around the rod and prevent the heavier weight from falling to the ground and investigate this phenomenon. For the theory, first is the ideal simple gravity pendulum. And this is the is the equation for the pendulum. And for theta, when theta is equal, it is almost zero. Sine theta can approach to theta and get the familiar, the equation that we are familiar with. But for the accurate solution for simple pendulum is shown here, and this needs further calculation. And this is a capsule equation, which means that when the weight is heavier and there have some rope, uh, um, roping around the rod. When the heavier weight is, is heavier weight can create a tension in this. And it, after a time's explanations, you find and there's a weight that it can hold. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I fixed what I said. It's a lighter one, and it can hold a heavier weight. And for my experiment. For the for the middle of the the coordinate, I set it with I set it with for the original point, and there is some coordinate that I use for a heavier weight here. It is the y-axis, and I use it for with um, perpendicular coordinates, and for a heavier weight, it's its position can be presented with zero, point zero and one. And for the lighter weight, because we'll look around the rod, I use polar coordinate. So for this one, it is the zero degree, and it, it have a setup here. And for this, the position I call it R theta. And for the initial condition, the theta zero is where I release the release the lighter weight and for L0 is how long from the rod to the lighter weight. And after the heavier weight drop, it, the lighter weight will start to loop around the rod. But after ro after looping around the rod due to Capstone equation, the heavier weight will stop and I will call this locked. 
So when this, um, I, sorry, this is t. dy dt equals zero, which is a, when heavier weights stop, I will call it locked. And before locked, the lighter weight will be presenting angular motion, but the r is becoming smaller. And when after it lock, it will only loop around the rod, but the radius will also become smaller. And for the apparatus, I have protractor and iPhone, which can, which I use with slow motion mode for 240 flat per second, and also tracker to analyze. So this is a heavier weight, and this is a lighter weight, and this is my rod, and this is connected with a rope. So for a pro procedure, first. I will have to measure the angle and initial condition. This is L0, which is calculated before. And also, the theta 0 is also calculated before. With this, I can release it, and I will not change the initial condition. And finally, I record it, and I finally analyze it. To analyze it, I, which I mentioned before, I use tracker, and also set the lens, which is its Thanks. So for the experiment one, this is my control vari variables. And first, the experiment is to investigate when what will happen when I change theta zero. So first, the independent variables, theta zero will come from 0 0.26 radius to 1.31 radius. And for the dependent variables, I would like to investigate the y of t for a heavier weight and the r of t <coughs> and theta of t for a lighter weight. So for theta is 1.31 radius. This is the heavy, heavier for the y, and this is the lighter for the r, and this is the lighter for theta. And you can notice that the y dropped from a time to here, and when this it becomes its velocity becomes zero, but the lighter weight will still continue to to um, have a motion. And when the time is stopped, it is about 1.8 second. And for this, it starts it it have a curve here, which is a bit like pendulum, but which is not exactly pendulum. But after this point, it comes to almost like a um, circular motion, and because these, it is the period for this can only be approximate. So it's just like when the length, when a um, length is longer, and the period will become higher due to t equals two pi uh, groups g fun <laughs> l over g, and this is not exactly, but only approximate for a small angle. But we can still investigate it that the period becomes smaller and smaller until it finally stops. And for the lighter R, it, it will abruptly drop before the lighter weight is locked, but uh, dropped smoothly after it starts its circular motion. And for theta equals one point. 0 0.5 radius is also have the same um, phenomenon, and but you can notice that this the oh, oh sorry I I have, I should explain one thing more. It's for the theta of radius for two pi is here and minus two pi is here. So when they come from here to here, it group from here to here. And for here to here is another circle. So this is the circle, how much circle it, its motion have taken. And for the light, for the theta, it which is smaller. We can notice that the, the circle for it to motion is less, is less than before. And for the next one, it's even less. And this is for the theta equals 0 0.52 radius. And finally, the 
cell equals 0 0.26 radian, which only has about two circles before it stops. <coughs> and my experiment two is to change the portion of MH um, to ML. MH, which is a heavier weight mass, and a ML, which is the lighter weight mass. And for the control variables, I use C tau zero equals 1.01 radius, which is 75 degree. And the L zero is 0 0.8 meters, and the R zero, which is the radius of a rod, is 0 0.0061 meters. And in dependent variables, I have MH to ML is 9, you can read it yourself. And the dependent variables is also same as before. And this is for when this portion is 9.81. And it has the same reaction phenomenon before. I misplaced this, which is which is not, not a big deal. And also, this is for the it is about nine nine to one, but because of the weight of the this balloon, so it becomes a bit different. So, and also for the 7.78. And also, you can notice that the, the motion before it locked is become smaller and smaller and it, for the mass that the portion that is quite similar but quite same with each other the the portion before lots of the motion becomes less and my third experiment is to change the L0 which is the length that the lighter weight will move so I choose this other row equals 1.31 radius and for about 9.921 and my dependent variables from 0 0.4 to 0 0.8. And for L0 equals 0 0.8. Okay. And uh, this is the result and this is for 0 0.7 and this is for 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 and you can notice that the length the portion for the motion before it becomes bigger and bigger after the length becomes smaller and smaller but the circle its its motion becomes less also and finally it's the experiment four which is changing our zero and the control variables is here and independent variables is this and this. So for this is for the bigger R0 and this is for a smaller R0. You can notice that the portion of the circle for the light for the R0 becomes smaller. And my conclusion is that the larger theta, the longer time before lock and the less after lock. And the bigger the MH, the portion of M max, the Time's longer up. before lock. Thank you. Okay, the next two minutes will be the, the question from the opponent to the reporter. Okay, let's start. Uh, first question. Um, is the tension equal to the centri centripetal force for the light load? No. Then why? Because its motion is like this, and may I use that one? So this is a rod and this is the, the lighter weight. <coughs> this is the force. This is the tension. And when it so because tension and the force of this um, this the net force of these two is the central pedal force. So, so uh, this is the this is the perpendicular portion for the motion of the the bow. So the net force for the light point is downward. Um, why 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 would it swing around the rod? I didn't say it's downward because this can go through here and this 
density, bigger mass. So this will also have a factor to this tension. So it is not just downward, but also more upward. So it will swing around the rock. Okay, so did you consider the friction force of the rock? I, I know that the, the I, I know the friction force will matter, but for the but rope, didn't mention. I didn't mention. Yeah. Yes, and for the okay. I, thank you. Time's up. Uh, next three minutes will be the preparation of the opponent. Okay, an opponent takes the floor. <coughs> Say again? I want to skip this stage. Straight into the discussion. Oh, okay. okay. You're going to skip this, the four minutes. Okay, let's start the discussion. For the next 14 minutes. 14 minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, as you control the length and the angle, yeah, you control that right now. And when you release the load, what about the mass of the light one? Does it do with this phenomenon? Uh, can you explain? I, I do. I mean I, the mass gap between the light, the light one and the heavy one. Do you mean the portion? Uh, yeah. I, do you have a data? Yeah. yeah. My experiment too is changing the portion for this. And I have three, three <coughs> independent variables. And this is for the bigger one. This is for the medium one and this is for the smaller one. So you can notice that the this the portion after it is locked, which is this the dy dt equals zero and after that, the portion for this becomes smaller and it starts to form a circular motion quicker. 
So what's your conclusion? Is the light the, the light one heavier or lighter is greater for the for it to which do? which means do you mean they can look more Yeah, what what's the most uh, ideal proportion for the two mass? Um for for my experiment I can say that the smaller might be better. And why? Um Sorry. As I see, you oh. both um, the heavier one and the lighter one you use are both success. Then why you say that the lighter one is better? Um, it is a bit strange to say better, but I mix the portion before it locked. So this you can see it. It's the heavier weight come to stop quicker, which is it takes 0 0.3 seconds, and for the Heavier one, it like, come from here to here. It takes about 0.5 seconds. Okay, so in your experiment, either the lighter one or the heavier one will shrink around that, right? But as I know, and in my opinion, the if you use the heavier one, it can probably go back and shrink in the, you know. Um, um, for my experiment. Do, do you want to ask that if how do this motion? What is the motion? Um, so for the heavier one, it's only drop from here to here vertical to the ground. So no, no, no. I, I mean um, the light one. The lighter in, one. In your experiment, it goes like this way. Yeah. And but in my opinion, if you if the light one is if the proportion is small, it the, the light load might go this way. Do you mean that it go from here yeah, and not here? always this way in your experiment? So you mean it will come from here and drop back? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So for the experiment two, I think it is possible because the energy is not enough for it to go. But for my experiment, I didn't investigate that, so this is the choice of my experiment. So you didn't you didn't observe the, that phenomenon, right? Um, I can say that I observed the motion. So for this one, maybe it comes shorter and shorter and becomes something not like this. It is really possible. Um, so. Uh, you just say that you neglect the friction force, right? I didn't why, say why do you I, think you can? I didn't really neglect the... Then why, I then just didn't discuss it. Because that, that, that means you neglect it. No, no, I, I mean that for this experiment, my independent variable is to change this. So it, the friction become my control variable. So I didn't need to, didn't need to consider it. Because I just changed this. And you use the stand drop, right? Yeah. So you can see the friction force as a constant? Yes. OK, then this is my question. What about the friction force? Does it actually do with this phenomenon? I mean, mm, if the rod is smooth, and we can consider the friction force um, almost equal to zero, and it is neg negligible, then can these phenomena actually happen? I don't say it is neglectable because due to Capson equation, when the heavier weight drop. No, no, I mean when the rod is smooth. When the rod is smooth, then this, the force. this phenomenon will not happen because when it go, when the rod loops, loops through the rod, it cannot prevent the heavier weight from dropping. So the lighter weight will just continue to smooth down, and the heavier weight won't come to stop until everything is off the rod. And how do you measure the velocity of the light one? You just show the diagram, right? And how, as I know, it can swim really fast. Yeah, so I use iPhone, which is um, here. It is slow motion, which is 240 left per second. So this is, it is isn't enough to investigate this. I can track it. You, you you can say that sometimes it may come to not to come continuous. Yes. Yeah.
Yeah. Because whether it's too flat, it's not too continuous. But but exact like I think the line is still seeable. So it is. I think it's fine. It is fine. It's not enough for the iPhone to investigate this phenomenon. Um, do you think the air resistance is negligible? You didn't mm. discuss about this. If the rod, if the light rod, uh, light load is swinging fast, the I think the air resistance force might be really big. Mm. Does it do is this phenomenon? Um, it, I think this can somehow affect the phenomenon, but for the drag force of the air is um, have a low C D square. So you say the the velocity is large. So the radius for the for this is about you can say that. What about the density of the light what light load? So you mean the if, density? If, if, the, if the mass is the constant, but the 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 velocity uh, and the volume is big, then what about the air resistance force might be a real big? Okay, so for first for first for the volume, it matters not because it's density, but because it's I think it's because it's area outside. So yeah, I think, I think if the yeah, volume, the volume is big. And also, I use the same lighter weight. So, for the experiment to compare with my different, different independent variables, I think it is fine to in investigate because all I just compare between and I control the variables because they are almost the same. And the you can see that the theta omega and then put the omega. So. It will become bigger, but I think it will break to use the higher density to drop. So why, why, I can why? ignore the why the higher density. The higher density, the same with is the same mass. If the volume is small and the air resistance force is negligible, negligible. Yes. Then why you can't neglect it? Because it is small enough, it didn't really affect the phenomenon. If the so you think that it didn't really affect this phenomenon? For my experiment, it didn't really affect it. But I don't know if you use the bigger one, like a, if you drop a paper okay, like okay, here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then um, please tell me what string do you use? String. Um, if the string is rougher, if the friction force might be bigger, and do you consider this situation? So for this rope, I all use the same. And the rod always the same, then, so the friction is the same. And it can can least phenomenon success if even if you use a rough string or what? Yes, like it, it will. It, yes, it will still. But you didn't do the experiment. I what did you say it can success? Um, I think you just that use the same string. I when you change the friction of the the constant of the friction here. It will drop like slower because due to the friction, it cannot really just drop too fast. So this will drop and this, the phenomenon won't be so obvious because the time after it drop becomes shorter and shorter. So when the friction is bigger. The heavier one can drop really fast. Yeah. Okay. Um, please go to the former the, 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 the formula you take into consideration. This one? Uh, the formula. This one? Yeah, yeah, this one. Um, how did you get this one? Can you explain it to me? So do you want me to prove this? Um, no, just, just explain. explain. How did you get it? This on, is on the internet or what? Yes, on the internet. So this is an equation that is, I think it is well known from everyone. So this equation is derived by others. So I didn't need to really derive it. Okay. So, uh, what is this equation trying to tell us? So for this is the tension of the lighter weight, or may I use the yeah, yeah. Okay. So for this is a, a circle. And, uh, 
like a rock. A rock. So when this is the heavier, and this is a lighter weight. Theoretically, if there is no friction, the higher weight will just drop. But if there is friction, <coughs> this can prevent the heavier weight from dropping. The friction can prevent the yeah. one. Okay. So the, the weight of this will cause the, the normal force for this and cause the friction here. And for every part of it. And so for this, we can say this is T and this is how much it can hold. So call it T tension hold. So T hold will become T exponential in five. And phi if if this is the point that it starts to add to here. And this we call can call it five. What about after the heavy, heavier one drop and stop at the at, at the bottom? And will, will will the light one still streaming around the rod, or yes. does it do with like? Something? Yeah. After this equation, this is like a critical point. So after this critical point, this cannot move. So this is just like a, like when it stop if it stop here. So it have a have a energy and it will start looping around and this one will it go faster because the radius is keep decreasing yes it will become faster because like for the for this like with the same and if this decreases this will become faster um, the conservation of angular <coughs> moment if there is no torque all right. Okay, for the next minute, the opponent will summarize the discussion. Okay. Um, in, in his opinion, he considered the friction force uh, might do with this phenomenon. If he said that if there isn't any tension force, uh, I mean, the tension force is negligible, that this phenomenon can't actually uh, happens, but he didn't explain why. And he used the sand string to do this experiment, but he didn't explain to me um, either that way. what will happen if he used a rougher one string or a, I don't know, a, yeah. And that's all. Okay. All right. Next three minutes will be the review of the question, both teams. Okay, let's start. Hi, I'm going to review it and ask some questions as it were. So can you basically uh, briefly say what is the main cause of this phenomenon? So first of all, oh, briefly. Briefly, okay. So first of all is the pendulum. But the pendulum radius is not constant. And the second is capstan. So, uh, so like if the light rod is here and the heavy rod is here, heavy load is here, and then it swings to here from here. And then what causes it is not drop but goes up. So there's a capstan equation which what fr place? friction really takes place. Yes, friction takes place. But did you discuss it in your This is the part that I didn't really discuss, but I okay. I, I observe the phenomenon. Okay, thank you. What about um, I think the friction force can be negligible is because as I, I, I in my experiment I I use the different rock to to do this phenomenon, but if the if the, if the rod is moved, I, it can happen. The heavier one. Really that the, what causes it to stop is the friction. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, can I ask for? Uh, can we go to page six? Okay. So you 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 try you guys do six skip this page and we're we're no. quick. And you said that okay, as I see now, you have the con you have the conservation of energy. So how can that happen in their friction? So I didn't say this. I just I said this ideal simple gravity pendulum, but I didn't say it is it is suitable. Uh, so for this is a hypothesis for your theory, right? It's not this. It's it's one of the cause, but not to cannot be just used to there. 
Okay. Uh, there should be capstone equation the, to be the last considered. Of this. I did say this is the background. It is just one of a factor in the background knowledge for the experts. Okay, thank you. The opponent is not a conservation of energy. Uh, so, um, uh, your, your, uh, so how is your theory actually connected with the results, experiment results? May I ask you for it? I didn't really calculate the theoretical figure. Mm -hmm. So you didn't really connect your theory and your experiment results? I can just say when the <coughs> things become smaller and the velocity and area, the velocity will become bigger and the theory will become smaller. Okay. Uh, okay. So may I ask the opponent, uh, you asked about error resistance, do you think it's really important? Mm, I think it might. Yes or no? Yeah. It's important. The velocity is pretty big. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. Uh, can, can the report go to, to page 94? Oh, sorry, the, the, the last page. Okay, time's up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next two minutes will be will be the preparation of the review. Two minutes. Okay, the preparation time of the reviewer is up. Okay, next four minutes will be the reviewer. Take the floor. Okay. Okay, hi, I'm the reviewer today, and today I'm doing a review of part 14 of this engine. The important statement says that you can make one heavy and one light load. One, one heavy and one light load. And the over, with the string over a certain number of rod. If you release the light load, so you can stay around the rod to keep it from falling. Investigate it to the number. And this is a point for the cons. 
uh, they did this uh, evaporation, which I think is amazing, actually, what causes this a plus phenomenon, which is important. And this is discussed in the material of the rod, and also discussed by the parameters. Uh, the cons of it, the cons of the opponent is that they said then too much time. Uh, they didn't compare the result in the theory, which I think is a big uh, issue. And then they also didn't discuss the result in the show velocity, which I think is also important. Uh, the first discussion of them is that um, the open asked if the, 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 the tension makes a tension pillow force. And then the bureau, and then the report said that it's the composition of the tension and the mass. mass and I believe that the, the viewer is right. And then uh, the opponent also asked about friction. And the report didn't mention it in his, in his report. And I think if the main factor of this whole phenomenon is friction, which causes the heavier load to stop. So I think uh, this is what the report should really consider in his theory. And it's in his theory. And then the opponent also asked about and then uh, the court answered that in the uh, phenomenon what happens. So I think uh, if you change a rod, it will change also change friction, and friction is what causes the phenomenon. So if it changes the material of the rod, and if there is no friction, the phenomenon will still happen. And then, and then if it's entirely smooth, then the phenomenon won't happen. And then uh, the opponent also discussed about the Capson equation. They want the report to explain it clearly. And I think uh, I agree with the report, but he explained it right. And a Capson equation can be used to solve this problem, but <coughs> we should improve on measuring the friction coefficient since they want to use this uh, equation. And this is the point missed. Uh, uh, as the opponent asked about uh, the, rod, the rod might switch back, backwards and forwards, I think the reporter should also investigate on this part. So they should say what, in, maybe in what condition it will happen in phenomena. And then uh, the first should discuss the restrictions, which I, I could I say is important as the main factor of this phenomena. And then the reporter should I really consider initial velocity of light though. They simply use the hands, but I don't think it's really reliable. And then they don't have connection between the theory and, and the experiment, even if like, they didn't have explanation. And then they, that, they have lack of comparison between the results. They keep short of like, a similar chart. And then for, and that's of all they do the conservation of energy. Uh, however, there's the main factor is friction. And then for an opponent, as she did discuss about the connection between theory and experiment, and then they did compare the difference between parameters. And they also didn't discuss about the really sacrifice <coughs> and then they claim that the friction is not that Okay, thank you. Thank Time's you. up. Okay, the reporter. Okay, so, you make the conclusion. Okay, okay, so first of all, for a discussion for friction, I didn't discuss the friction. I didn't change it for the independent variables, but I didn't neglect the friction. I have to say the friction is take a place, take place important in the in my experiment, but I didn't change the friction, so this is my fault. But I didn't say this is negligible. And for a conservation of the energy, is I only say it is for the first theory of this. So this is for only this <coughs> situation, but I didn't say this is the situation for my experiment. And I didn't have the connection for the theory and my experiment, but I, I didn't have the number connected, but I have the phenomenon connected, so I think it's not too good, but I think I have connected. And <coughs> so, so for the opponent, first of all, they discuss, he discussed the um, the portion of the mass to with me and the and some phenomena like friction and the air drag force and the rope material for friction and also it's got about capstan equation and for the air resistance I didn't I, I think it is negligible so I can clarify my opinion okay and for the the light one motion so when it is just moves. I think it will drop and it will like the rope will just go around. It will be pulled by the heavier weight and it will come off the rod at last. And I think that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so next five minutes will be the the question of the jury. Any jury has a question? Yes, uh, I have a question for three, three, all three teams. Uh, 
Can you think of a real life situation where you can apply the capstan equations? So first to the reporter. So if you need to make something attack not to move and you need to swing it off out on a rod, you can just easily by putting a rope on the rod. And the lighter I mean, the example in real life. for entertainment like circus if they have a really heavy thing want to like swing it and you can use a very lightweight to to hold it so it won't fall. Uh, what about you do? Uh, first of all I think the catalytic equation can be used to discuss a real friction equation and then second of all I also think that uh, if you want to lift up the like a high high heavy thing you can use the like rock. I have a question for the reporter. Have you ever considered this situation with that? There's a machine called Atwood machine, right? It's so okay. it's very easy, like uh, You have two, in the physics, uh, the, yeah. you know, we have one heavy, heavy weight and then a lighter one. Yeah. Have you ever considered this pendulum with that machine? So that machine is this pendulum for the theta equals zero. And with friction. Yeah, but but it's a bit different because the I think the machine have the circle the circuit around, so the friction is a bit different. Yeah, and in your experiment, I didn't see any like maybe the heavy heavy weight stop for a moment and then keep dropping. Have you ever did? Uh, um, it is. I that? I didn't happen in the experiment here, but when the friction is big enough, like when you use your hand, it will stop and fall again. Because when this comes here and the tension is small, it will stop. And when it drops, the tension will become bigger and it will hold again. Okay. Uh, for the opponent and the review, have you ever uh, saw that situation before? And why is that? You know what my question is? Can you replace it again? Okay. Once when you release the lighter rope, yes. and the heavy one will drop, but at some point am I gonna stop, and then for a moment and then it keep dropping. Have you ever discussed that? Never see that. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, no more questions from the jury. Okay, so let's start uh, for, uh, the, the, for the let's show the grades for the. A reporter, please. Seven, six, seven, seven. I'm sorry. Seven. Okay, got it. Okay, next, let's. Uh, opponent, please. Okay, let's next we'll show the grades for the opponent. Seven, five, seven, eight, five. Okay, you got it? Okay, next, let's show the, the grades for the reviewer. Eight, I'm sorry, uh, uh, nine, seven, eight, uh, eight. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Okay, thank you, three teams, for the first problem. And we will have a recess for 10 minutes, okay? We have a break for 10 minutes. And three teams have to, read, uh, to change the position. Thank you. My topic is funnel and ball. Introduction. 
A light bulb, such as ping pong ball, can be picked up with a funnel by blowing air through it. However, it won't remain stable at the nozzle of the funnel. Next. Theory, the knowledge principle. First of all, we assume that air is incompressible. So it abides by the continuity equation. A1, B1 is equal to A2, B2. A is the sectional area, and the B is the velocity of the air. So we can get a conclusion. If the, if the sectional area is lower, the, the air flow into will have a higher velocity. When we, as long as we blow air through the narrow part of the funnel, the, the velocity of the air will increase. Then, according to Bernoulli's principle, the pressure will decrease. By contrast, the air below the funnel have higher velocity than the air in the narrow part of the funnel. So it has higher pressure. Obviously, the pressure difference will lead the ball to the nozzle of the funnel. Next, we are going to talk about the experiment from a micro perspective. When the fluid passes through a surface, the velocity of the fluid will decline progressively, which is related to the distance between the surface. And the boundary layer is referred to the area the boundary layer is referred to the area affected by this theory. And the main source of this theory is the viscous force. However, uh, as the foremost thing I talk is Bernoulli's principle. That principle can be applied to the air with viscosity. Thus, we have to discuss the air without this viscosity and the air with viscosity, respectively. Okay, let's look at the simulating figures. At point B, it has smaller sectional area. So according to continuity equation, A1, B1 is equal to A2, B2. The velocity at point B is higher than the velocity at point C. Again, according to Bernoulli's principle, the pressure at point B is smaller than the pressure at point C. But now, we talk about the air without viscosity, so it abides by the Bernoulli's principle. And the green area is the air with viscosity. And now we are talking about the Y area without viscosity. So it abides by the Bernoulli's principle. Then, if the, the, the point B and point C, there is a pressure difference between two points. And if the pressure difference is big enough to trigger the boundary layer separation, there will be a wave flow the wave flow from point B to point C. And thus, if we blow air through this bowl, there will be a wave flow nearby. And this wave flow will affect the ball to make it unstable, un unstable instead of instead of remain stable on the nozzle. It will go up and down, up and down constantly. That's why we won't observe the ph phenomenon, just stay at the nozzle of the funnel. It will go up and down constantly. And that's all. Thanks. All right. Uh, thank you for the report. Question of the opponent to the reporter. Two minutes stop.
Okay, thank you. So can you first go to your theory of your boundary uh, law? Under there? Yes. Yeah, that's a force. Yes, so you see that this uh, the area actually hits the uh, the ball and in, in your next plane. The 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 air actually goes around the ball. So so uh, that like this is this is different, so can you explain this? We can see this this area just like uh, because this uh, this figure is only talk about a surface, right? Yes. It's only a surface, and that's this is a ball, and we can draw a tangent line. Okay, 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 thank you. So, so actually, comment about your theory. So can you show? So do you do any experiment to prove that your theory is correct? You mean our own experiments? Oh, yes. Uh, we haven't done any experiment, but we can observe the phenomena. So, so can you show how you observe your phenomena, like your experiment video or something? Experiment video. I think that is available on many. Uh, so, 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 have you really done your experiment by yourself? Yes, well, we have done, but so we just observe the phenomena with, with our. So, okay, so can you shortly explain how do you do experiment? Like, like how how much weight is your ball? Like. Was how what is the shape of the model? Oh, you mean the yes uh, uh, about, about your your own experiments? Oh, yes, we, we can we can adapt uh we can attach a balloon balloon the 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 machine to clean the floor yes. and to the funnel uh, yes. and we can pick on the machine and it will apply the air the high velocity air. Okay, so this is how you do your experiment. Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. That's all. Okay. Okay. Next three minutes will be the preparation of the opponent. Thank you.
Okay, the present time is up. Okay, let's stop. Other school changes following the marriage to morning and the opponent from taking this up. So now I'm going to be opposed to problem number one, not number four. I found number problem number four, not number four. So this is problem statement. A light bulb, for instance, a ping pong ball can be picked up with a funnel by blowing air through it. Investigate the phenomenon and investigate the uh, relevant parameters. So this is a short term solving a problem. First, uh, how does the ball be picked up by the blowing air? Since the proxy doesn't mention that the the ball was picked up by the blowing air, and we will and then is to investigate the motion and the boundary condition of the phenomenon, and we will discuss about the minimum flow rate and the maximum flow rate that can be picked up the ball. And that is the how does the relevant parameters will affect the results. So this is a strong and weak point of the. Uh, uh, reporter. So uh, he had a uh, clear explanation about the phenomenon, but since he didn't have the experience to support his uh, theory and then didn't have, uh, he didn't uh, investigate the random parameters and how does it affect the experiment. And also he didn't have the results to show and then uh, he didn't film the observation video to uh, prove that he has did the experiment and also uh, she, uh, he didn't have the explanation about the experiment and also he didn't collect the experimental theory since he didn't have the experiments. So this will be a discussion point that we will discuss in the paper. So first, uh, uh, he, had this, uh, he had mentioned that about the rhythm big salt and uh, the uh, continuity equation, but since he had mentioned, uh, he had assumed that the air is uh, incompressible, but since, uh, but since uh, how, how could he prove that the air was incompressible? So that the volumes can be used, and also uh, I think that the Guanda effect will be a better way to uh, invest, uh, to explain this phenomenon, and also the boundary conditions. Since we, we have to we have to discuss the uh, minimum flow rate that can be picked up the ball, and also the maximum flow rate that since that it will be an impact force that gives to a ball, and also the uh, the pressure difference that will pick up the ball. So we will uh, discuss about the boundary condition, and that is the uh, experiment. So. About the motion of the ball, so will the uh, ball rotate or spin or even shaking that this will affect it by that this will affect the result of the experiment. And also how could they make sure that their their uh, steady uh, the flow rate are steady since they are using a vacuum and how did they measure the flow rate of it? And then about the air resistance and the turbulence that go, go through the funnel. Since when it is go to a funnel then the air would the direction of the air will be affected by the funnel shape. So, will it cause any air resistance and air turbulence that get to the ball? And then it's the impact force that caused by the airflow. So, there will be an impact force that gets to the ball, and also it will be picked up by the pressure difference. So, we'll, and, and also we'll discuss about the boundary condition that I've mentioned before. And then, uh, affected by the parameters. So, uh, since the report didn't uh, uh, mention any parameters, uh, so we will discuss about the uh, maybe a short, uh, shape of the funnel will affect the uh, results and also the weight and the density of the ball and maybe there will be other problems that will affect this phenomenon and I would like to skip to the next phase okay so next phase will be the discussion <coughs> your phone and the reporter uh, so so can you first uh, so can you go to go, yeah, so, uh, can you go to the next page so can you explain so what is the forces that cause the airflow to go this way Instead of goes right to the ball, uh, right to the ball. You mean when I when I blow air to yes. the ball, yes. and why is it go this way? Yes. Not go straight. Yes. Because you assume that the air is 
So how could you make sure that? So the, the, the theory says if your air, the, the velocity of the air is higher than the velocity of our voice, in, in that way, the air is compressible. But as usual in our in react reality, in our real life, just the vacuum below the air cannot reach the high velocity. Cannot reach such a high velocity because if, if you want to compress all the air, your velocity has to higher than the voice. So, the so you think voice. that in the reality, this is uh, the, the air should be incom is incompressible, so that the just, just as a, we, just as our observation, we use a vacuum that is impossible to compress the air. Okay, so uh, I agree for the report that in reality the uh, airflow uh, was incompressible, but not because of the reason. Because, uh, because the, the, the Mach number is smaller than one, so that is why the uh, airflow can, can be considered as the incompressible flow that the probability loss can be used. Also, uh, you have mentioned about use a vacuum to uh, conduct your uh, experiments. So can you show the? So can you show how did you do the experiments? Like any video or pictures? Uh, I, I can just explain that to you. Okay. Just, uh, just, 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 I, I, what I said, I attached the, just as a straw, and one side to the vacuum and one side to the funnel. And I just pick, pick on the vacuum to, to provide, pro, pro, provide the high velocity. Here. So, so the vacuum is uh, blowing air through the funnel? Yes. Okay. So, uh, can I use the vacuum? So, so since this will this was a ball, and there will be a, a gravity, uh, this will be a force force by the gravity. So when you are blowing air through it, there will be a uh, impact force that's given to the uh, uh, ball, right? Yes. So do you think that the impact force will cause the effect to go uh, to the results? So the result I so do you think that impact force will affect this phenomenon? The, the impact force that the, that the air flows through it. Well, the, the, air, the air flows through it will go into the So you think that the, uh, the air won't go, uh, won't get, go straight to the ball because of the water impact? Some, some of the air, yes, actually, some of the air will go to the ball. So do you think that will affect the experiment? Yes, that, that, that does. But, but if we enlarge the height of the funnel, does it enlarge the height of the funnel? The, this effect will decrease. But, but since the I mentioned that the ball has to be picked up, so so I think when the when it, when it is picked up, the ball should be here. So 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 here will be so so here will be there will be an impact force that gets to the ball here since it has been picked up. It, it, just, just as just as what I said, people go up and down. Now now we remain stable and up and up. And people go down and up and Okay, so I agree with the reporter that when the height is uh, bigger, that the impact force will be smaller. But since there will be an impact force that gets to the ball, so I think that uh, they should be uh, they should investigate how does the impact force uh, affect the function of the ball. And about the boundary conditions, that there, there seems to be has a minimum flow rate and a maximum flow rate of the uh, to to pick up the ball. So do you have investigate this? The, the number of the you mean the minima and the maxima yes. velocity of the air? Yes. Uh, we haven't done this yet. We just observed that it can be picked up by the flow, by the air flow. So do you have, do, 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 so do you agree that there will be a minimum flow rate and the maximum flow rate that will that that there will be a minimum flow rate and the maximum flow rate to pick up the ball? Yeah, of, of course, because the the ball the, the mass of the ball is is in negative ball. So we have to resist the, the we resist the gravitational force of the ball. So we have a we have to have big big enough we have a big enough pressure difference that we can so, pick out the ball. So just to mention you you will think that the mass of the ball. Okay. You, you just mentioned that you think that the mass of the ball. No, I said the mass of the ball is in negative ball. In oh, okay. Negative okay. Sorry, sorry. So, uh, so you have mentioned that you use vacuum to conduct your experiment. So, can you how could you make sure that the uh, flow rate of the vacuum?
talk of this that I need. Because the, the vacuum, we can modify the flow velocity of the vacuum. So, so, so do you have the, so, so do you have the flow rate of the, the your vacuum? The, 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 uh, you mean the real value of yes. the velocity? Yes. So we, we, we have no equipment to measure the velocity. So, 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 so how can you make sure that the flow rate is that is and do the measure it? We, we just look at a look at a electronic monitor on the vacuum. They can choose the uh, one flow at or two or three. So the velocity of the air and the and the intensity of the air. Oh, thank you. So uh, I think the uh, I think the reporter has to make sure that the vacuum, that the flow rate that to the vacuum, of the flow rate should be that needs to, to conduct the experiments. And since they didn't measure it, I think this will be that. So I think the flow rate has to be measured to make sure that the flow rate is that. So uh, according, so so when the air is flowing through it, so but I think the flow rate will be affected. So do you agree that the flow, uh, the direction of the flow will be affected by the one of the the, by the shape of the funnel. Yeah, so, so if here is the funnel look like this, and the funnel look like this, uh, how do you think that will uh, how, how do you think that will affect the direction of the funnel? So can you draw it? You mean the air I blow? Yes. So do you think how how would it affect? How would it affect? I assume for the experiment. So 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 so, so then do the the main shape of the funnel. So, so we just discussed that. Okay, so 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 can you predict that how how would this affect the uh, risk very results? How many will this be? So we mean the air flow uh, along the border or uh, uh, along the path? Oh, both. Uh, 
uh, motion of the ball since there actually will be the impact force that gets to the ball. And they can shoot a matter the flow rate to make sure that it's that DNA and they can do their instruments. And then they can calculate their uh, results by the measurement of the force. And the shape of the bottle will affect the ball direction. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Okay, the referee, uh, the reviewers, I'm sorry, the reviewer will question the most team for the next three minutes. Okay, so for the reporter, so do you agree with the opponent to that? Uh, do you think that the air is incompressible? The, the air is incompressible. No, we think the air is incompressible. Okay, so why? Because the, in, in, in our looking, the velocity of the air cannot reach the maximum okay. to cause the encumbered opponent. Uh, so you think the air is compressed? Yes. Uh, the different uh, reason for the yes. Yeah. So what? So uh, uh, but uh, 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 number is the velocity of the fluid uh, over the uh, over the so 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 velocity. So since the Mach number is that's the what we can consider this as a uh, uh, incompressible flow according to NASA's research. Oh, so you think that the impact was uh, yes. So do you think, do you agree that the impact for the adapter experiment, the impact for the yeah, impact the going straight to the ball, so the impact, do you think it will affect the experiment? You mean the, the yeah. air I flow, it is in the ball. Okay. Um, so we think, uh, do you think that the shape of one of the Yes, I think one in one way. Uh, so as, as that it, it, it's a funnel, it's a shape of the funnel is uh, is similar to the shape of the uh, of the ball. So the, the the direction of the so as you see this is the conical funnel, the conical shape funnel. So this will affect the direction of the uh, 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 direction of the airflow since the the distance between each is different. So I think this will affect. So this is how it affect the uh, result of the uh, experiment. That's it? Okay. Uh, the review will prepare for the stage for the next two minutes. Okay, time's up. The reviewer, please check the floor. Okay. Um, so, I'm the reviewer, and uh, first I'm going to...
uh, they just talk about this theory, so, and it's kind of clear, so that, I think that's their uh, advantage, but they do no experiment to support this theory, and no observation to show, to show, and that of parameters, and no discussion and conclusion, lack of connection to theory and observation, and they even speak some Chinese words. And these are the pros and cons of the opponent. I think uh, they really did a great job because they make, uh, make clear explanation and made a big point. Also, um, I think they are really smart because um, even though the word has come to an end, they managed to finish the questioning space and keep it in their own pace. So that's good. And here are some recommendations. So for a reporter, I think you should show your show your experiment to support the theory and consider more parameters. Um, last, compare the theoretical value to the experimental value. And for the opponent, I think you can discuss how it will change, not only about whether it will attack or not. Um, so here are some end points of their discussion. So the opponent uh, asked why the flow of the site may come from or not. Um, and the reporter said it's because of the effect, but they didn't mention it in their presentation. Um, and then, uh, the opponent asked whether it impact towards the effect or not. Uh, the reporter said yes, but uh, didn't consider it. Um, um, our point of view is over like this. It's uh, the people. Okay. Um, and point number three. Uh, It's the shape of the funnel that uh, will attack the phenomenon. And the reporter disagreed with the opponent, but we agree with the opponent because they give uh, their explanations. Uh, yeah. And last, uh, that's that point. Um, they, the last point is uh, whether the air is incompressible. They both agree that it is incompressible, but they have different reasons. Uh, the reporter's thing is because their vacuum uh, it, the velocity is not high enough to try to become incompressible. And the uh, opponent says that the mag is not big enough to let it be incompressible. And that's it. Okay, that's your. Okay, thank you. Okay, now the reporter will conclude, make the conclude remark. Okay, first of all, I applied. I apologize for the lack of the parameters such as impact force and the shape of the funnel. But we have to determine that we we measure the flow rate through the electronic monitor on the vacuum. That is a control variables. Um, under the condition we have we don't have professional equip equipment, so we try our best to control the variable instead of instead of other other change. So that's all. Alright, thank you. Uh, okay, next will be the question from the jury. Any question? One is the why if you don't have the experiment to support the your your question. You don't have time or you don't have equipment. As you said. Both, both are, we don't. So, is, do you think it, it's something not right? Do, do, do you, in your mind, do you think it probably, probably is impossible, right? Because it, I think it's not very um, expensive, or you have spent many time to do the experiment. I think it's quite easy. Yes, but yeah, but we, we have no equipment to measure the flow rate or the velocity of the air. So, just you use the the um, They have a two equipment that you can borrow it for free, right? From the company. I mean, there's two companies. Uh, I remember that two. Maybe, but <laughs> we don't have that. So yeah, 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 we, we, we know the information, but... Yeah, you know the information, right? Yeah, it is, but yeah. it, it's our uh, first, first attempt to this competition. So we are not familiar with the regulation or other information. Okay. Uh, any question from the other two? No. 
Uh, okay. Then we will make the, the grade. Okay, first that's for the reporter. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, let's make, uh, maybe, let's give us some time to do the calculation. <coughs> Okay, uh, I think it's about, right, okay, that's first for the grades for the, the reporter. Three, two, three, three, four. Okay, thank you. Next for the opponent. Nine, eight, eight, nine, nine. Okay, then for the uh, reviewer. Seven, six, five, six, seven. Okay, that will be the this stage. Thank you very much. And we will take a break for about 15 minutes. Thank you.
Judges and fellow debaters. Hi, I'm the reporter from King Excel, and today I want to report the title of number six, Hurricane Balls. And here's the problem statement. The problem statement goes: Hurricane Balls, two syllables that join together to respond at incredibly high frequency by first spinning them by hand and then blowing on them through a tube. For example, a drilling stroke. Explain and investigate this phenomenon. And uh, according to the problem statement, uh, the reporter believes that we should the main focus that we should focus is on how the phenomenon works and how the parameters affect the result, and also the definition of high frequency. And here's my, the report sunlight. First, I'll going to show you the observation video, then we'll move to the equipment of the our experimental setup, and then we'll move to the theory part, then we'll go into the experiment and discussion, and finally the conclusion. Okay, and this is our observation video. And as you can see, we use two cameras to catch this phenomenon. Phenomenon, and one is horizontal on the uh, one is horizontal face to the surface, and one is uh, vertically on the surface. So we can investigate to uh, investigate those two parameters at the same time. And then you can see that this phenomenon, uh, the, the ball is spinning in a very high frequency and then it's lifting up by some forces, and the forces that we will discuss is later. And now we'll move to equipment, and you can see that we use the steel balls, as the problem statement says, we use the, uh, we use the hand to uh, spin the steel balls on the glass of the surface, and we use the air compressor to flow on the sphere, and then you will have a phenomenon like I just showed you. And here's my experimental setup. And as you can see, we use a straw with an air expressor to blow on the sphere and then on the glasses of surface and to investigate this phenomenon. And it is also the experimental setup that we use. And we also use the flow to uh, to analyze this, the flow rate, which we, we, we were using in this experiment. And here's my theory part. And first, you can see that uh, uh, there are normal forces that supporting the, uh, the system, and then we know that uh, the, the because it has an angular velocity, so you will have a friction. You will have two friction, and according to the right hand rule, this this friction will cause this way of the torque, and this friction will cause this way of the torque. And because we know that there aren't any 100% of that surface, so the uh, so the uh, friction of this point and this point will be not the same. And because it will be not the same, so this torque is not stable. So it will be lift up a little bit, or, or, or a little bit. So when the sphere be lift up a little bit, this torque will, will disappear. And then we will only have a one torque, and this torque has a vertical direction of the forces and the uh, horizontal direction of the forces. And the horizontal and, and the vertical direction of the, of the, of the component Will, uh, will make the sphere, will, will make the angular momentum, as you can see, of the L uh, change the direction, and then the, the sphere will be lifted up like this. And you can see that G is a gravity, gravitational acceleration. And and uh, the to the formula to to the, to the formula, uh, we use the Lagrange equation to uh, investigate this phenomenon. And then we know that uh, the, because the definition of the uh, Lagrange equation is the kinetic energy uh, minus the potential energy. And this one is the, the kinetic energy, and this one is the potential energy. 
but you can see that the kinetic energy can, is, can be dis de described as the per phi theta and the, the uh, phi and, and phi, but uh, the, the, the potential energy can, can only dis uh, define as the theta. So I think in this experiment, uh, the theta is, is the most important uh, angle that we, we should focus on. And then we assume that it rose without slipping, uh, slipping, and then we can so that we can define the per phi and phi as omega. And then when we de define it as omega, uh, the Lagrange equation can be des derived as, as this equation. And we all, we know that uh, uh, per, uh, theta is depends on omega, so uh, so uh, we put this into the a Lagrange equation, and we got that partial L part over partial theta will equal zero. And then, if the partial if, if the partial L over prime theta equals zero, we put the L into this equation again, and then we got sine theta cos theta equals this way. And then we the, the we know that the sine theta will be crossed, and then we we also know that the uh, I one and I three as known as the moment of inertia of uh, phi and per phi, and we we put this those uh, we, we put those value into this equation, and we got cosine theta equals two over phi minus g o, o g over uh, omega square r, and r is the radius. And in this formula, we can know that the maximum of the cosine theta will equals to two over phi, and uh, we we also define the inclination angle as as uh, the horizontal surface and the uh, lifting up angle. So we so and and then due to the constant theta maximum is two oh five and we calculate the value of it, we got the inclination angle, the maximum of the inclination angle will be twenty four degrees. And now I'm going to talk about the definition of a high frequency. Because we know that different people has different forces to this system. Because so so they spin the so, so when it's spin a sphere, uh, the initial the initial velocity will be not the same. So to define the high frequency, we know that the different flow rate and the different angular velocity will cause different uh, terminal speed. And the, we know that terminal speed is stable and steady. So uh, we, we so we can define the high frequency as the terminal speed. And here's my parameters. And first, let's move to the experiment of the, and this is a, uh, the chart of the flow rate and the angle velocity. And as you can see, our control variable is the diameter of the sphere. And to our experimental result, we got uh, the omega equals to the omega equals to uh, this formula. And then we put the omega to put into the flow rate so that we can change the omega into a flow rate and we can then this sentence will be described as the constant theta e we equals to uh, the relationship between the constant theta and the uh, and the flow rate and f is the flow rate and it, this is a, the experiment of the radius and the inclination angle and as you can see inclination angle is the angle that is uh, to the horizontal surface and our control variable is the flow rate the flow rate and just just like I mentioned, uh, the the maximum of inclination angle is 24 degrees. But in our experiment, we you know uh, in our experiment you can see that uh, many of them is bigger than 24 degrees. So that we should have uh, some uh, we should have some condition that we didn't uh, consider. And I think that is because of we we are uh, we we were, we, we are uh, flowing on a sphere and not 100 uh, percent horizontally so it will have some uh, you will have some uh, component of the flow rate will give this system the supporting forces to to make this system uh, to make the value of it uh, become bigger and then this is an experiment of the flow rate and inclination angle and as you can see uh, our control variable is the diameter of the sphere and to explain this phenomenon we can we know that the torque equals to R cross F, and F, uh, F is the uh, F is the forces that causes by the flow rate. So when the flow rate is, get, is getting bigger, the R of the radius will get bigger too, and the torque, and the and the torque will get bigger. So when the torque is getting bigger, it will influence this phenomenon more in this experiment. 
and here's my experiment of the radius and angular velocity. And our control variable is a flow rate. And in this in this chart, you can see that uh, when the radius when the radius is become bigger, the angular velocity might get bigger. But this point this point is uh, straight. And I think it is because we know that the Newton's second law that said which said f equals to m a. So when the flow rate is uh, a constant, the m the, the m it, the m is not a constant because the radius is get, become bigger, and then so the acceleration of the of of the system will be now the same, and then it will be like it, it will be move, move slower. And our control uh, and I, and we measure in this experiment we got that the critical value of of the uh, rate uh, of the radius of the sphere is 5.5 millimeter. And here's uh, my experiment of the radius and the cosine theta. And you can see that the, the maximum of the cosine theta equals to the formula like this. And then so the maximum of the cosine theta will become 2 over 5. But with, uh, in our experimental uh, result, we also, we also got the experiment data is bigger than the theory part. And I think it is also because of the components, uh, component forces that give the system, uh, just like I just mentioned. And here's my conclusion. And in this chart, you can see that when the flow rate is getting bigger, the angle velocity, which stands for the omega, will get bigger too. And the total theta will equal to, and, and, and during, uh, due to this experimental result, we, we got the, we also get the uh, formula of the angular velocity and the, 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 the relationship between the angular velocity and the flow rate. And we put the flow rate into, in, and we put, put the flow rate into this equation, and we got this equation so that we can dis describe the, the theta as the flow rate. And uh, in this chart, you can see that the, when the radius is getting bigger, the cosine theta will be, will, might get bigger. But when, when the critical value, when, when the uh, radius is bigger than the critical value, it might get slower than the, <coughs> the angle velocity might get slower. And in this chart, you can see that when the radius is getting bigger, the cosine theta will, might get bigger too, and the inclination will get bigger. And, According to this formula, you, you can also see that uh, in London. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next will be the opponent to ask the question for two minutes. Okay. Um, this data is there a theoretic, uh, is there a velocity that um, the ball reaches a stable state of constant? Angle. Yes, and we describe it as a terminal speed, just like uh, we define the what, yeah, is it? what? What is it? The, the velocity. Uh, we 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 we, uh, we analyze this every experimental result as our uh, high, high high frequency as the terminal speed, and this is our experiment. I, I I mean the the value of the velocity that reaches the stable state. Uh, what can you? Uh, you, you said that the cosine theta equals uh, two over five, and uh, if the velocity um, grows bigger, then the cosine theta is always two over five. And yes. What is that velocity that it first touches? Uh, cosine theta equals two over five. Um, I believe that it is uh, it, it is a frequency that between. Because we can, uh, in, in, because you asked me about the angular velocity, and I think uh, when we put the critical value of radius of over here, we c in this formula we can get the cosine theta, and in this formula, in this formula we can use use it to describe as in this formula we can describe as the terminal speed, so we can calculate the terminal speed. Okay. Um, do you consider which direction um, the flow influences uh, the, you, the flow, flow impact on the? Yes, I've, I've mentioned that uh, there might be, be some component forces that will 
gives the system support. But how does it affect? Uh, because Thank you. Time's up. Next three minutes will be the preparation of the phone. Okay, opponent takes the floor, please. Discussion starts. 
Okay. Uh, first of all, how um how how do you how do you like blow the ball? Do you blow both of them or just one? Uh, we blow we we blow the dire, uh, we blow the direction of the ball uh, to this system is for uh, it's not horizontally and I think we blow just one ball and but he if it has it has the best frequency so uh. For some, uh, in some uh, short time, you, you might, uh, you might accelerate two of them. Oh, um. So, do you, do you consider the acceleration um, to two of them? Uh, can you describe it again? Yeah. Um. So, your your objective is to blow one of them. Yes. But do you, you blow two of them at the same time? Yes. And do you consider? Uh, no, not, not at the same time. It's uh, in, at a short time. Oh, just in some short periods. Yes. Yeah. Uh, is there some significant effect on your data? Uh, I think it might. It might because the uh, we know that the torque equals to r r across f. So uh, I think the flow rate will be will, the direction of two sphere will be not the same and will be opposite. So it will give the system the same uh, torque to influence this. Uh, okay. And next question. Uh, if if um if I consider this this uh cir circumstance that despite of the angular velocity of the two balls, it is also have a net velocity that it that it um just goes um not uh, just standing in the right in the same place. How does it affect of uh, affect the friction? <laughs> Um, like uh, your two balls, two balls are rotating like this. Yes. And there is also a velocity that it goes like this. Yes. Yeah. And does it? Did you consider this? Yes, I can, uh, I also consider it. So we use uh, two uh, two flow rates to uh, to flow on the sphere and at the same time. Oh, so, so it won't move. Yes, it won't move. Okay. And uh, um. Um, do you, uh, as I talked about the Magnus effect, uh, it is that the, uh, the, the flow will goes like around the ball and, and it will, uh, it will goes, if, if the ball rotates like this, yes. and the flow will go this way yes. and this way. So it will make two torques to the system and you will, the spinning and will... And due to the Magnus effect, the velocity here, uh, with the ball is um, much slower, uh, much faster, so the atmosphere is quite low, so it will rise. And downwards, and um, if it goes downwards, the... Um, no, um, because it is spinning, right? Yes. Spinning. So, 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 on the, on the upside, you you mean that uh, during the phenomenon, you the the, the flow rate will influence the to, to will will uh, will pretend a, a a flow that will give this system the energy to rise up. Yeah. Okay. And so I think the you, the phenomenon that you investigated that uh, the theta is uh, more than twenty four degrees is because of that. Uh, I th I think it might also because of that, and I think you know it, the. Because our data is bigger than that, so I think it might be a, 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 a you have to be a, some some reason of of it, and I also think that our because our flow rate is not one hundred percent of a, a vertical to a horizontal to a, to a, to a, so you will have a component forces to rise it up. So I think both of them might uh, affect this result. Okay. Um. Do you consider the uh the Condition that you uh, that the flow rate goes just vertical to the to the two balls. Uh, just goes mm -hmm. vertical. Yes. Um, that is the flow rate. Yes. And the two balls spinning. Yes. And you you, you blow it first like this. Yes. Right? And if it the flow rate goes like this, and mm -hmm. what will it happen? Um, we have we have made that experiment before, and then, and then we know that. Uh, because can okay, use the blackboard, okay? Because we know that this is a sphere, and then when we blow, when, when, when we uh, blow on the pole vertically, there might there might give 
the system a the forces that make the ball lift up, and then during to cosine theta equals to the like, like, like this formula. Um, the cosine the the cosine theta. This is omega, right? angle of that. But the cosine is like a figure, like this is relatively bigger, the, the angle of velocity will get smaller. So the, the angle of velocity getting smaller and it will, it will uh, continue to uh, become slower. So it will, and as you will, the, the angle of velocity moment of the system will be bigger. Yes? Oh, so when you say again, what why the velocity? Because we know that when we flow on the ball vertically, it will retain a, a, a flow that might, um, that might uh, lift up the, the system. Why it will lift up? Because, because the, when the flow rate is, is uh, when the flow rate is not on the surface, it will have uh, another forces that is uh, refers to the system. Yes. But do you consider the impact force? Oh, I also, I also, I also consider it, and I think that will, that will make, also make the, uh, content, the, the will also make the, let's say, like, become so smaller. But, but, but the, the, but I think this, all this flow rate will be bigger than this flow rate. So, yes. Okay. And uh, do you think that uh, how you, how you, guess the. In the very beginning, you use your hand to hit the ball. Yes. Does the strength or some net force influence the phenomenon? Uh, you mean that how you rotate it by hand? Uh, we we use we we use the hand to spin the ball, but but I, we know that at, uh, different people have different force forces to the to make the torque that is the system. So uh, we we ignore the initial initial velocity because it is not stable and then we so we use the terminal speed to define as a high frequency as the problem is difficult. Uh, okay, can you redefine again what what is called a high frequency? Uh, we define the high frequency as the uh, terminal speed because we know that the terminal speed uh, it will have a, the terminal speed will have a, a constant. Yeah, yes. And uh, um, can I can I ask you how do you how, how do you measure your angle? Uh, we use the tracker to measure our angle. Yes. So, you, um, you you mean that in this angle, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we have the vertical. Uh, we have the vertical vertical video that shows because we use two cameras, so we can we can uh, catch the phenomenon from the vertical way and the horizontal way, and and we we use because. Uh, we use tracker to analyze this, the this this angle. To uh, uh, how how do you set the horizontal axis? Uh, just use it by hand. No, because we use the camera that is that we know that is uh, uh, is on the table and the table is is flat. So how do you how do you know that the table is flat? Uh, if the table is not flat, the glass might not flat too. Yeah. Yes. So if the gas is not flat, the I think it won't influence this phenomenon too much. Okay. And uh, um, do 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 um, can you explain the relation of the spinning and rotation? Uh, spinning is like spinning is like this way. Oh, we didn't we didn't uh, we didn't describe this phenomenon at at this at uh, my. Uh, Experience. Um, yes. So, do you agree that the the velocity of spinning will equals the angular uh, uh, will equals the velocity of rotating? Because there is no slide on the uh, region part. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. So um, after after a quarter of time, the 
ball will um, will not slide. It will only like rolling. You I mean, mean uh, like rolling? Rolling. Yeah. You, you mean the you mean this angle of rolling? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I I also uh, mentioned of, of in my theory part. And then because we put this into because we calculate the energy of this and we put it in the Lagrange equation and when e, when we put in, it into Lagrange equation uh, you know that uh, to a theory part to 20, 24 yes and then you know you can see that this one is a Lagrange equation and because we because we know that the angle velocity is depends on the the the, the, the theta, so we choose to uh, put the put the partial L over partial theta, and the and we we also define this angle as the perfect. And but we but we we is we, but but in this formula, when perfect is in this formula, it will become a constant and it, it will become zero. So we can get this formula. Yes. Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, how, how do you, how do you um, know that uh, uh, when doing the experiment, the glass is absolutely horizontal? Uh, okay. So you mean that the table, if the table is not horizontal, the glass yeah, the will gravity will affect uh, the the net velocity. Uh, I think mm, I think that might cause a little bit of influence, but not that much. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, uh, and then, um, um, you, you said you use a straw to yes. uh, attach on the like the pump. Yes. Or something. Uh, Compressor. Yes. Yeah. W what is what is the diameter of the diameter of the straw? Uh, we we have calculated because we have we know that Q equals to a v a a times v and a is the uh, a is the is is the uh, a is the a a is the uh, time's up. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, the opponent will summarize the discussion for one minute. Summarize. Uh, first, um, we discuss we discuss about uh, how do uh, how do the reporter blow the ball when he's doing the experiment, and the next um, we talk about the magnet magnet effect. Uh, impacted on the ball rotation, and then we talk about uh, if we blow the two balls on the vertical axis, and how does it affect the rotation of the ball? And later we discuss um, how 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 does it starts that uh, matters the matters the result or not? And uh, um, and uh, we discussed that if it is the um, if the table is absolutely horizontal, that um, influences the experiment. And then we talk about the the relationship between the spinning and rotation. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, time's up. Okay, next we will have three minutes from the reviewer to ask both teams. Reviewer.
my, my perception about that. Yeah, I, I, I read that the spin of, spin of velocity will equal to the rotating one. So, because the tube is not perfect here, so the line of the centers might spot shorter than the 2R, so uh, what will it be? Because the two balls, like, uh, I think the center of mass will be like like here. So and I think I think that is the line of the line of the center is smaller than the radius. Can you explain it? I can. So if you stick stick the ball together, yes. and the the touch of the ball might be. Uh, not uh, only a not a point, so it might be an area. So uh, the I think that is influence is is going too much. I agree with the order. I I don't think because I would use steel balls and steel balls the uh, the deformation is quite small. Is uh, okay to be neglected. All right, thank you. And next, uh, we will have uh, two minutes for the review to prepare for the presentation. Time's up. Uh, review or check the floor, please.
in fact, uh, in fact, this phenomenon and so the opponent asks the question, why won't the entire system move? And the proposer say, uh, uh, they they use they use blowers uh, because the voice is spinning. So uh, when you uh, blow in the same direction, and it will. Uh, blow, blow, blow this way, and when it's, when it's spinning to another way, it will uh, float to the other way. So the ball won't move. And the opponent asks that why is the actual theta is bigger than they predict at x plus four degree. And the opponent says the Lower even 100% horizontal to a system. And the reporter, uh, the opponent said, How do you measure the angle? And uh, the reporter says, uh, They use the video version to observe the angle. So uh, the opponent says, Why do you think the glass is horizontal? And the opponent thinks that uh, if it isn't, it's not horizontal, the gravity force might cause differences. Uh, and and I ask that the velocity of rotating and the velocity of rolling be if it's the same, and they they said uh, yes. That's all. Okay. Uh, thank you. And now will be the, the reporter to make the conclusion remarks. Uh, during the previous discussion, we know uh, we discussed the the ball is stay. We know that the ball is stay in the same position. So we use another flow to flow like on it to, to the uh, from the opposite direction, so the ball will not moving. And then so we can assume that the. Uh, the ball rose rolls without its living. And then we also know that the high, we, we also define the high frequency as the terminal speed because we know that the terminal speed is a constant and it is stable and steady, it will not change easily. And uh, we also know that because the problem state requires so we have to use hand and uh, so so that everyone has different forces to the system. So that's why we use the terminal speed. And so and the initial velocity of of the sphere by by uh, hand rolling will not be the same. So that's so that's why we choose the terminal speed to measure this phenomenon. And we we also use the tracker cameras from two direction. And we and we also know that uh, we we also make sure that the table is that uh, it is vertically to the to the ground. So it, it, it will not uh, uh, it will not influence uh, so much. And then we all, we know we also know that the flow travels vertically, so in the end of the angle, the angle velocity will be zero, and and the part in the middle of the balls won't affect this experiment too much. And I think uh, the the main angle that we should focus on is the omega, and it, it is not per five and five because it, because we when we put those value into the Lagrangian equation, it will become zero. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, right now we'll be the from the question, uh, question from the jury. Yes. Okay, for the report, and uh, you just forget about the, the, the question. Question. Can you just tell us where why the force? So just give us a concise question. Why is the 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 force the lift up of the ball? Where does the force come from? Uh, according to our discussion, I think uh, this 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 happened because of oh, the flow when the flow rate passing or uh, passing through the the surface of the sphere, it will have a uh, uh, forces that will make this sphere be become bigger. And then we also know that in our experiment, because we can make sure that it is one hundred percent horizontally to to the, the flow rate is one hundred percent horizontally 
to this surface, so to this system. So there might be some component uh, forces that might give this system to uh, rising the inclination. Uh, what, what, what do you think about? Okay, uh, your question is that how, how yeah, what the direction of the, where are the force from? Um, you mean the uh, side flow this way? The, no, the direction flow the this way? Yeah. Okay, um, uh, because uh, um, despite, uh, despite the rotating gears also, the ball is spinning. Spinning, and, and if the air goes this way, and the velocity between the air and the ball is like um, uh, it's like faster than it's like faster so so the atmosphere will be smaller than the uh, the pressure the pressure the pressure will be smaller than the um, in the down uh, downside of the ball the velocity between between the ball and the air is uh, like smaller so the pressure will be bigger. Okay, so, so yeah, you are saying the the force is, is kind of related to the fluidity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. But it's it's spinning this way, but you're throwing this way. Why they are both like force? Just for how much? Uh, I mean there are um some force. Okay, anyway, so your answer is related to the fluidity. Yeah. First, let's uh, have the present presenter ready. Uh, the reviewer, please. Let's, okay, for the great, for the reporter. Okay, it's nine, eight, eight. Sorry. Eight, nine, eight, eight, seven, eight. Okay. Next, let's. At the great for the, the opponent. Okay, seven, 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 seven. Okay, and next, uh, the great for the, the review. Five, six, five, three, five. All right. Uh, thank you very much. This will be the stage two. And thank you for all the three teams and all for the jury. All right. Thank you.